In the last episode, we looked at Boolean operations from a theoretical point of view. But today, let's apply all that knowledge as we create this cool lighthouse illustration together. Let's start off with a simple rectangle. As I'm moving it around the artboard, notice that it automatically snaps to the middle. To achieve this, make sure you have Smart Guides activated from the Windows panel. It'll come in handy along the way. All right, now I want to create the effect of a perforated edge, which most stamps have. So let's start with one circle. Just hold down the Shift key to create it. Then hold down Option while dragging it to the right so that we duplicate it once. And then I'll just go to my repeat actions here in the inspector and click this button a bunch of times until I create the maximum number of circles that this side of the rectangle allows. Since there's more space on the right, I'll move my last circle a bit and then I'll distribute them all horizontally. Let's center them really quick. And now all we have to do is replicate this on all sides. The opposite side should look the same, so select all the circles and hold down Option while dragging. Here's where the smart guides are a huge time saver. Then let's duplicate one circle and place it on the right. Duplicate it again with the Option key, then again and again using the repeat function. Distribute again, just like we did before. And to finish off, hold down the Option key. And boom, all our perforations are done. Doesn't look like it? Well, let's finally introduce Boolean operations to show you what I mean. Select everything, the circles, rectangle, all of it. Then go to Boolean Subtract, and bam, now our perforations have truly come to life. Next, I want to create the background of the stamp in this muted red color. First, I'll center both. And let's lock these shapes so they don't get in the way while we create everything else. Amazing. Let's switch to this lovely cream color and then go to our polygon tool. I'll create the base of my lighthouse with a triangle, which I'll edit later with the node tool. Something like that. Let's center it. And then with the node tool, I'm just pulling on the top point all the way up. It's meant to go beyond our stamp shape, don't worry. Let's switch to our third color, which is this deep navy blue. And let's create a rectangle here close to the base. Then I duplicate it with Option and distribute the resulting shapes vertically so they're nice and neat. These rectangles will give the typical striped aesthetic to my lighthouse by playing with the concept of negative space. You'll see what I mean in a second, but for now let's duplicate another rectangle and elongate it until it covers the top of my triangle completely. Finally, select all and apply the subtract operation once again. Do you see what I meant by playing with negative space? The cool thing is that I've still got a single object here, even though it might look like I'm working with six individual shapes. Let's give our lighthouse a little door. The lighthouse keeper needs to get in somehow. With just a square and a circle, aligned so that they seamlessly blend into one another, I've made a simple door shape using Boolean Unite. Next, let's give our lighthouse a base and a top. You can also easily cut a circle in half with Boolean operations. First, just create a circle and a rectangle. Align the rectangle along the diagonal here, and then subtract the rectangle from the circle. That's it. Be mindful that when you subtract, the shape on top crops the shape underneath without lending it its properties. To round it up, I've created another small circle at the top and united the two shapes into one. Another fun thing we can do is give our lighthouse a gallery deck. So we're going to use the rectangle tool a lot here once for the base, and then again to make this opening, which will be converted into negative space. Once we've duplicated and distributed all the rectangles, a quick tip here, you can hold down Shift to multi-select. We can include the base into our selection and apply Exclude this time. By using the Exclude operation, 
The properties of the shape on top, the tiny rectangles, were applied to the base shape. That's why it's white. But in hindsight, I could have used subtract here because I want the gallery to be blue instead. Let's finish off the gallery with another rectangle at the base here. All right, what's a lighthouse without a light? Here, I'm applying the same rectangle trick that we used to create the lighthouse. Let's give it a yellow to transparent gradient so that it looks more like a beam of light. And then I'll just duplicate it here on the other side and place both behind the lighthouse layer. And with that, we're done. In this video, we looked at the most commonly used Boolean operations, and hopefully we've inspired you to look at vector design in a different light. Let us know below if this type of academy lesson helps. Stay tuned for our next episode, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Bye!